All right, thank you for keeping it Monday report. We're talking about sustainable waste management here, and my guests are still with me. Dr. Taiba, let me come to you. How do you make money from trash? This is the question I get from people all the time. And also, how do you see your contribution evolving over time? You're already dealing with the digital platform where you have an app that you explained earlier on to Edward Chwea. But how does one make money from trash? Uh, thank you for that question. So at Baustaka Enterprise, we leverage on technology, which is the Baustaka app, um, which uh, promotes segregation of waste at source. So it promotes that um, by uh, empowering the communities to be able to segregate their waste at source, which could be from the residential homes. And then via the app, they can trade that waste. For example, we have a feature for plastic waste trading. So you segregate your plastic waste, you trade it for a cash incentive via the app, and immediately after trading it, you get paid the cash incentive. Uh, again, via this, uh, the, the mobile app, you accumulate points which can be redeemed for outpatient health services. Yes. Um, so via the app, uh, we are able to um, ensure that the communities can create um, uh, income generating opportunities from the segregated uh, waste via the app. Yeah. That's one. And for Baustaka, uh, from the uh, innovative solutions where we pay the uh, community for, uh, for segregating the waste, where they, they get to learn that the waste has value, for example, plastic waste. How we make money is we charge residential homes, we charge corporates, and we charge commercial institutions where we come in and we um, uh, 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 offer waste management services. So if we come and offer uh, management services, you pay us. But via the app, if you segregate the waste, the waste is supposed to be like the Sustainable Waste Management Act, you get onto the app and uh, you get into the plastic uh, trading um, uh, feature, we pay you. You. Yeah. Yes. So how will this evolve over time in your view? Because also one other thing that people are wondering is uh, what will it take for you to upscale mm -hmm. nationwide? Yes. So at the moment right now we were piloting and now we are at a stage where we want to scale across the coast region of Kenya and possibly across the country. And we, are, we also want to add value to the waste that we are uh, segregating. So at Baustaka we have an initiative. It's a strategic initiative known as the Baustaka Eco Champion Program where we empower local communities, especially the young girls, the youth and the women to become environmental ambassadors. So their primary goal is to go into the community and um, uh, advocate and champion for sustainable waste management practices. So we, we thought we don't want to stop there. So right now we've set up an eco-circular hub which is integrating the principles of circular economy. We have the digital platform where you can, uh, you can make money. Now we want to come together as communities to see how we can make an end product out of that waste and then we sell that end product. For example, we want to start making keychains. We've already, we already have um, a prototype of a pavement block where we want to ensure that that segregated waste goes all the way to an end product, end product so that the communities can actually make more money from the segregated waste. Okay. Yes. And everything, Dr. Ayubi, there's issues that have been raised. One, unauthorized waste managers, another one engaging in formal groups. Let's start with what Omiti had raised there as a concern. How are you engaging the informal groups when it comes to dealing with waste management? Uh, for the informal groups, <clears throat> when the role was being developed, uh, that idea, that, that issue came up in a big way. And uh, in, the, in the Act, Sustainable Waste Management Act, uh, the informal groups who, who are located in counties, because waste is, as I said, is devolved, they are supposed to, all the informal groups are supposed to register themselves with the counties so that the county knows uh, who they are so that they can plan for them in terms of capacity building, in terms of any, any assistance, uh, for example, with uh, uh, personal protective equipment, uh, PPEs, and also, the, there is also this aspect of uh, extended producer responsibility. You know, uh, in the law, and especially the regulation that is about to be, to be gazetted, we have indicated clearly that uh, we have come up with a formula. And uh, in the formula, there is the aspect of involving everybody who plays a part in the value chain, the waste management value chain. And uh, some of these people are the waste pickers, and so far, we have held uh, meetings with them, uh, meetings uh, together with the, the producers, the, the big companies in this country, and uh, they have agreed on prices. And actually, uh, 
some of the companies owned by the, the, the producers have already released prices <coughs> for different products. So right now, uh, most of the, of the products we have in, in Kenya, they, 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 there is already a price already uh, given by the producers to the waste pickers. And the price is graduated such that there is that money that is going to the recycler, the money that is going to the aggregator, and the one that is going to the, to the waste picker. So they, they are already factored in, and we make sure that the prices are determined in a, in a discussion, in a, in a collaborative manner with the, with the waste pickers. Mm -hmm. So that is an area that has been adequately addressed. Uh, the NEMA will continue to follow up that discussion. It is captured in our... Uh, extended producer responsibility plan that is supposed to be submitted uh, to NEMA by the, 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 the producer responsibility organizations that is represented here by James. Yeah. So, so we have not forgotten them. Actually, they are at the center yeah. of uh, waste management and what we want is money to trickle down to them. Mm -hmm. Now, we are using the extended producer responsibility to help us clean the country. So far, since... Uh, uh, February this year, we have managed to take enforcement action of uh, uh, to over 180 companies. 180 companies. 180 companies have been punished by NEMA because their Not waste. Really the EPR. Yes, because their waste was found in our rivers. So if we find the uh, waste, uh, uh, a product that is labeled a certain company in the river, yeah. we have taken enforcement action on them. We have demanded that they clean up the place and they also work with the local groups to make sure that they compensate them yeah. for helping them to remove waste from the environment. And we will continue with this yeah. so that uh, uh, the, that that uh, waste picking mm. becomes uh, an occupation yeah. because already waste is money, waste is valuable. And in the process, if you have uh, problematic waste yeah. that is not recyclable, then you will have to pay more because after they collect and then you pick it up, where will you take it? Mm. Maybe you take it to the dump site, mm. but remember there are also waste pickers there. Yeah. So. Maybe they will pick your product again and then you pay, you pay a second time and a third time. That cost will deter uh, Kenya having uh, products that are problematic so that we transition slowly towards materials that are recyclable and zero waste, mm. like uh, it is anticipated in our law. Has this been published? Because I haven't seen the 180 companies you're talking about that have no, failed you, in the extended we, responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> we did publish 29 initially. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And the companies came and pleaded with us that uh, they are ready to work with us to make sure that uh, they comply. And actually, they, 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 they are complying. They are, they are doing well. Uh, the, the first phase of the 29 companies, they cleaned uh, all the sites. Uh, the 85 companies, the second phase involved 85 companies. They did a good job. And now we have 75 companies who are cleaning... Uh, uh, a river around Dorodua, going all the way to Gong. And we will continue to do the same. Actually, what you have heard about uh, cleaning Nairobi River, because uh, it is the, 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 the issue that is threading now, uh, EPR will be a major component in helping us to clean the river. Actually, solid waste should not be there in our environment, because the moment uh, we associate it with you, uh, a producer, then we take enforcement action immediately. Okay. Yes. So Nairobi River will be cleaned mostly it, based on EPR, which yes, is extended yes. producer responsibility. Solid Most waste. these companies will be the ones cleaned. Yes. Solid waste, we can assure Kenyans that uh, in the, by the end of this year, there should be no solid waste in our environment. Okay. We can assure them that. Yeah. <laughs> James, I see you smiling. <laughs> is there something that can be achieved? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's something we've constantly been at loggerheads with Dr. Ayub. Um, yeah. Quite a chunk of the companies is talking about uh, my members. Yes. Um, the approach, the ad hoc approach that NEMA is taking um, poses the risk of us legitimizing bad behavior, where it is okay for James to dump waste in the river because company YZ will come and clean tomorrow. How sustainable it is, we are asking uh, 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 for answers from NEMA. 
Because the reality is some of these things, first we need to recognize that we are dealing with a problematic be challenge of behavior change. Mm -hmm. This is something that could easily take up to 30 years to be able to encourage behavior change. He'll tell you for sure that in some instances where we've gone to clean those rivers, we are cleaning a specific site, 50 meters down the line, someone is dumping fresh waste. So that begs the question, is this a sustainable model? Mm. Yes. Trevor, I can explain. It's, yeah. very, it's very sustainable <laughs> in the sense that uh, what we are asking the companies to do is to, uh, is to put a value on their waste. Every, every piece of waste should have a value. The moment uh, it is valued and there is a price for collecting, then everybody, when they see it, yeah. even that person who is dumping in the river, they will, they will quickly come there and collect because it is valuable. Right now what is happening is everybody is bringing things into this country. Uh, they, they just mind bringing in and make their profits, but they don't mind what will happen to that packaging yeah. after the, the person has used the item. So the waste is, uh, the, 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 the burden is left to the county governments. Okay. Of course, of course. But, but James, what do you suggest as something more sustainable? <laughs> of course, we, we need to first appreciate that the EPR law is still relatively new in the country. Yeah. Uh, companies need some significant amount of time to be able to comply. Mm. The government is set, itself has not um, gazetted the regulations that should, should operationalize the EPR uh, provisions. So a, mal, a, a number of interventions can be, can be, can be uh, used at, at a go. So of course the consumer facing bit where we're encouraging proper disposal of waste there is also the long-term intervention where we are working with these um, uh, producers and uh, quite a number of our members are into these discussions where we are saying at the beginning of production processes designed for recyclability in mind so that we are not having 90% of the packaging coming into the country having no value. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is what is being collected is valuable, what is left in the dump site is what is deemed to be invaluable. Yeah. But the, desi the, the design for recyclability is a whole process it is, requires significant investments in terms of production uh, processes, mm. and this should take a bit of time. So the idea is, let us allow for EPR to take its space. This is a concept that was predominantly in, uh, common in the global north. They had to fully imp implement it. Why are we trying to leapfrog certain processes mm. and imagine that we can be able to fully implement EPR within three years of um, introduction of the law in the country. Yeah. yeah. And Omiti, you know, this is part of what you've been running as CARA. You've been trying to run a pilot on uh, waste segregation at source. Yeah. What have you found out? Because this is where the real issue really is. Uh, <coughs> Trevor, just like I said, uh, a lot of people are segregating. Uh, there's some level of segregation at source okay. happening. Even before the law came, I just told you that uh, back at home in Ushago or at my place or within our neighborhoods, people are trying to recycle, reuse, uh, you know, all the newspapers people don't throw away. Yeah. They wait and, and sell to someone. Uh, bottles, there's a take back scheme, which could be upscaled to, to work. Yeah. What we need to do is how do we push the polluters to pay just like how you be saying how do we push those who are polluting the producers who are produ who are polluting our which are james are members of, yes which are james <laughs> members <laughs> a lot of things that are currently happening is greenwashing yeah or they don't want to really engage with the communities to help remove this waste into uh, out of the out of the en environment mm -hmm. so our residents i've just told you uh, I've just given a good example. In Kara, we have over 1,500 resident associations, yeah. already organized neighborhoods, with over 3 million residents mm -hmm. in these spaces. Uh, why can't we start with these people, see what is working and what is not working? And we've said people are willing to segregate so long as there is that information, which is power, so long as there is another major issue and a challenge is, is the issue of monitoring and reporting. Mm -hmm. Yes, you report to NEMA, you report to Kanjo, no one is taking action. People don't want to be accountable. Mm -hmm. how, do we, how can we use technology? 
to support us with monitoring yeah. and reporting on these issues of waste management. Because we don't produce a lot of waste in, in Kenya. Waste is just mismanaged. Mm. You go to other countries uh, like uh, Denmark where I've been, you find them even buying waste. But then the waste that they are producing at a ho at household level is huge compared to what Kenya is producing at household level. Mm. So waste is just mismanaged, not that we are producing a lot of a lot of waste. Is that what you're, you're thinking as well, Dr. Taiba, that we're I'd just like mismanaging your waste? <laughs> I'd like to comment. Uh, first and foremost, CARA is dealing with organized uh, um, organi associations, yes. right? Mm -hmm. uh, Baustaka on the ground, we deal with organized associations, high end, um, uh, high end and middle income communities, but also low income communities. They're not organized. At right. all. At all. They're not yeah. organized at all. And it is in these communities where you have cultural resistance. It is in these communities where you see illegal dumping of waste. But what has worked for Baustaka is community policing reporting. Mm. See what he's talking about, monitoring and uh, monitoring of what is going on in the segre segregation at source. Um, even though we use Baustaka for data collection to be able to make more informed decisions, we also use the communities to report illegal dumping of waste. We use the communities to let us know which households are segregating, which households are not segregating, um, who can we go to so that we can uh, um, capacity build them and empower them to become en environmental ambassadors. So I think there's some kind of a disconnect between what we see on the ground with CARA, maybe yeah. because there's a system with them, but where we work at low income communities, unfortunately there is no system. So how can that be levelized? How can it be made? Can I, can I just comment yeah. on that? Uh, uh, I, when I first uh, started, I mentioned that we work in all income levels. Yeah. Uh, so you will find us in high-end estates like Mudaiga. You'll find our members in middle-income estates like Kilimanis. You'll find our members in low-income areas. I, give, I gave an example of, you know, Makongeni, uh, Kaloleni, yeah. Kibra, you will find our members there. But then we are saying uh, in these low income areas where there are organized resident associations, yeah. uh, things tend to work. And this is why we came up with a model estate on waste management. We want to see what is working in high income end mm. areas because they are already organized, collecting their waste, paying for it. And, you know, having service provider coming and collect it. Mm. The only problem is that the service providers that are collecting this waste from high-end estates, they come and dump it in low-income areas. Yet they've been paid to take it to Dandora or wherever uh, collection point is. So that is also a major challenge that uh, the, the issue of access to environmental justice. Yeah. We pay you to collect and go deliver our waste to Dandora. You collect it and deliver it uh, or dispose it illegally yeah. in a low income uh, area. So that is, that is a challenge. Mm -hmm. So organize SS because they have their monitoring system, they can pay for these services, uh, they can easily deliver. For the low income areas who cannot afford, mm -hmm. but then I've seen it, they are ready and willing to pay. Mm. They are provided services are, are being delivered. They are willing and ready to pay for these services. Okay. For those who can't pay, why can't now the county come in and support establishing systems so that it works? Mm. So we want to see what is working in the high end, high end income area, yeah. middle income area, estates like Nyayo Estate yeah. doing a lot with over 30,000 residents. 5,000 gay estate where we are piloting this yeah. with mm. over 3,000 residents, uh, you, know, you see, yeah. waste management services are working. Mm -hmm. Why is it not working in the low income area? But James, so, is there a, a one size fits all, like what Omiti is saying, or do we have to then no, 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 stagger it depending and, and on what? I'm shaking my head. I'm yeah. feeling like Omiti is so detached from reality yeah. uh, because what is happening, uh, what will be happening in Karen uh, cannot necessarily work in Korogosh. Mm -hmm. uh, even we've done waste categorization surveys and whatever, the volumes of wastes uh, and the types coming uh, within 
the three categories of the residential uh, 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 spaces yeah. are totally different. And that would mean that each group or neighborhood uh, would require different models of um, uh, collection and disposal of waste. So what he's saying might not necessarily apply on all fronts. Um, uh, it would require adaptive models on different on, on each of the uh, levels of um, uh, our neighborhoods. Yeah. Yes. So, but you are trying to put in a consumer-led transformation. Who yes. are you partnering with this, and what is the strategy to then increase it, considering <laughs> that they are different? <laughs> places, like you say. So, of course, um, our, our the bulk of our conversation primarily focuses on the consumer. Yeah. Uh, we are trying to focus on ensuring that they have that agency feeling, that first you can actually earn from your waste. Yeah. The second thing is even if you're not uh, earning, then you have an obligation uh, for the upcoming generation to try and hand over a clean and healthy environment. Yeah. So giving you that agency feeling and, and, and um, inspired to take action, positive action. Uh, the other bit, and these are people now we are working with, the waste management operators. So after the consumers have properly disposed of their waste, they've segregated their waste. Who is of taking this waste? Mm -hmm. So trying to also increase their capacities. So here we work with what we are calling a subsidy model. Mm -hmm. So if um, Bostaka's uh, collection and recycling capacity at, date, at, at present is 60 tons per month, we try and see how can we be able to scale up your capacity to, bet, to say, get to 80 uh, uh, metric tons per month. Mm -hmm. So we... Uh, give them some sort of a subsidy to be able to encourage them to collect more. Of course, also expand their production lines to include other fractions that would ordinarily not be able to uh, be collected from the environment. Yeah. Yes. So, Dr. Ayub, so what is the grand plan here? Because there seems to be an issue, first of all, of illegal dumping, mm. and then generally for the country, which direction should we be going? That's a very good question. What I see in this uh, consumer-led uh, transformation uh, it needs a lot of support from the county government and even from NEMA in the sense that uh, uh, it, would, it is very sad that people are segregating their waste and then when the truck comes, it is mixed again. Because uh, in the existing receptacles uh, at the dam sites, there is no requirement that uh, you cannot bring in uh, mixed waste. So oh, the challenge we are facing as NEMA is uh, the county governments, because waste is a devolved function. But what I see, because I'm in charge of enforcement, every other day there is an incident, a complaint about waste dumped along the, the road, uh, in the river. Okay, and in, in interesting, interestingly, when I, we release an order that county government, there is this waste at a particular place, uh, clear it within seven days, it is done, and then after that, uh, after a few weeks, it comes back. So what what uh, Nemo would like to see? Our grad plan still remains that the existing dam sites be reorganized and then uh, lock that gate and start with the private service providers. Let them not bring in mixed waste and then let them create awareness to the communities. What uh, uh, James is talking about, community driven. Community driven can be best done by the waste service providers, making sure that uh, they, they don't carry mixed waste from the people. And at the same time, uh, my brother from Kara talked about the fine of 20,000, uh, where the, the county should do a lot of enforcement so that people realize that we are serious about uh, recovering as much waste as possible and it should not be mixed so that it retains its value. So if I come to your home, I would expect you to provide me with a receipt from a waste service provider to show that you have, you, you have already engaged a waste service provider who will take that waste to the light press. Mm -hmm. And then community report if there is any dumping within their vicinity. And like I said, uh, EPR, external producer responsibility, when, when it is, starts working properly, then you will also become a, a waste picker.
because <laughs> the waste in your house, you will keep it safely, nicely. You will pack it, package it properly because when you take it to the material recovery facility, mm -hmm. uh, there is money from the producers to compensate you for not putting that waste in the, in the bin. Mm -hmm. So that is the grad plan. It is possible to clean Kenya. Kenya has no waste. The only waste that is documented in our, in our sustainable waste management policy mm -hmm. is only 5%. So since the country generates about 25,000 yeah. tons of waste per day, we only, the waste that is there is only 5% of that. The rest of it is useful. So uh, it is possible. Yeah. We don't uh, require a lot of uh, donors for this. It is possible to do it. Uh, with, the, with the facilities that we have. Yeah. And then once we do it well, yeah. the recyclers will come and invest in this country. Okay. Dr. Taiba seems to disagree in terms of the waste management because you also mentioned in your earlier on conversation with Edward Chua that the biggest concern is organic waste, right? Mm -hmm. So how then do you agree with what Dr. Taiba is saying that most of the waste we can actually deal with it on our own? Yes, I agree with him. Only if we have material recovery facilities. The MRFs, which yes. we don't. Which we don't. Unfortunately. And there's no money to do that away from the county levels because they, every single time they have a county integrated development plan, which is a CIDP, they say they don't have enough resources to build MRF facilities. But we have designated waste receptor course. But we've also already said that not all counties would be able to have a functional MRF because the amount of waste that they produce is not enough to sustain the MRF. So is there a gap in terms of policy requirement and the reality in the ground? I wish, I wish there could have been one demonstrating that uh, they have this reorganized uh, receptacle yeah. and then we could listen to them. Right now, what we have is uh, uh, they, they, they are not uh, inf uh, uh, complying with our law. Okay. Yes. All right. There's a lot challenge we have. Let me take some feedback, then I'll come to you for closing remarks. James, I see you have a response, a reaction to give, but let's see what you're saying, first of all, online. Climax Johnny. Says, so ask Dr. Masharia to explain why no single contact numbers for NEMA displayed on their website works. Sewer leakages for Ruiwasco in Ruiru, Ebenezer, all over. Yet when we call NEMA, none of their numbers go through. No, the numbers, the numbers work. <laughs> the numbers work. They're in my department and there is a desk. I, they respond every day. Even they call. We call. We call our customers. If you report an incident to NEMA, we will respond to the incident okay. and we will call back okay. to ask you why you assisted. Is the incident over? So that we close it. Okay. We normally open and close. <laughs> All our incidents. And James. <laughs> <laughs> no, try it. <laughs> try it now. For his response. <laughs> For you, his response. Try it now. Do okay. <laughs> you agree or you don't want to make a comment on that? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ovid. I. I want to comment on this, and this is what I said, yeah. that why can't we use technology to support yeah. with monitoring and reporting some of these issues? Mm. Uh, you see what uh, I have to call, which means if there is no one at, at, at that call center, yeah. I'll not get feedback. If I write a letter, today I'll write a letter to the director of enforcement. The director of enforcement will mark this letter to his de deputy director. The deputy director will mark this letter to his another deputy, deputy director. <laughs> Those two deputies or three deputies will mark this letter to the sub-county director. The sub-county director will mark this letter to... The deputy sub-county. The deputy <laughs> sub-county <laughs> sub will mark this letter to the environment officer yeah the environment officer will mark this letter to the supervisor yeah the supervisor will mark this letter to the the person on the ground who is at the enforcer uh, who is the enforcer yeah why can't we use the techno why can't we use a technology okay. that if i report today all these people who are in this line yeah can see this on the back end i can give uh, you can give me real-time feedback yeah. that we've seen this so that if the environment officer who is at the ground, yeah. the enforcer, is not responsive, it automatically escalates to the next level. Okay. I don't know why we use don't want technology. to use technology. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Doctor Ayub, you can respond to the use of technology well, to finish on the... Well, we, we use technology. Yeah. 
Uh, and actually, let, let me confirm that uh, we are very fast in responding to incidents. Actually, uh, our target is to respond yeah. immediately. And what we do, uh, most of the complaints that we have are on noise, for example, and that is the work of county. You know, it is a devolved function. Mm -hmm. It only becomes a NEMA issue when it persists. Okay? So immediately we receive uh, an incident, we relate to the, to the count, our, our county offices and the county government, mm -hmm. and we follow up. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, uh, as we feel that, uh, fine, there are always gaps in technology, we are improving, but uh, with the current technology, yeah. we make sure that uh, we relay our incident as quickly as possible okay. to, to, to the responsible officers. All right. N not, not, not the chain he has talked about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Let's bring up some of the feedback and wind up on this. I'll come to all of you for closing remarks. Lisa says, I'm a teacher. Waste management and segregation is not in our schools, neither in class or in practice. If students can learn about this from an early age, then this culture can be inculcated in time. Okay, interesting. Great. Okelo Molimu says, to boost the waste management efforts, county governments should employ street families who would move from street to street collecting waste. Secondly, all landlords should be compelled to establish proper waste management systems before being issued with certificates of occupancy. Okay? Or Rutwa Sam says, if people are not involved, that is, they are facilitated in ways that they are able to discard all trash in homes conveniently, collected sh shortest time possible, unlike now, it's just dumped in designated areas for days, plus sewage needs cover up all areas. Okay. Okisa says, how hard can it be to make laws that mandate property owners to ensure that they provide waste management systems as a mandatory requirement? Okay. Omiti, I'll start with you closing remarks. What is the one thing you want the listeners here and the viewers to hear from you today? What is your rallying call? Uh, that uh, we don't have a lot of waste yeah. in Kenya. Waste is just mismanaged. Okay. And for, sus for us to sustainably manage our waste, we need to go through organized groups. Mm -hmm. And organized groups like resident associations are voluntary in nature and they are existing to protect and secure their neighborhoods. Okay. If we use this as entry point, then we will get it right if we want to sustainably manage our waste. Okay, Dr. Taiba? Waste has wealth. It's that simple. Yeah? I think everybody and needs you're to understand that to waste has, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Taiba. Um, uh, let's, let's all uh, report. Any incidents, any, any waste that is lying in your neighborhood, just, just tell us so that we alert the county government and we will follow up to make sure that action is taken. Do not live uh, within that environment that has that pugent smell from waste, uh, the environment that is not aesthetic. Just report using our hotline numbers, which are on our website. We will respond and make sure that that waste, uh, we, we push the counties to collect that waste so that we live in a, in a clean and healthy environment. Okay. Yeah. James, closing remarks. Trevor, mine would be to make reference to a book. Yeah. It's titled, Who Will Cry uh, When I Die? Mine would be a call to action uh, to our viewers. Who will cry if you don't take care of your um, environment? Because the reality is we don't have a spare mother, mother, mother earth. Mm -hmm. You essentially have to take um, inspired action at individual household level, properly dispose of your waste. It's really disturbing that in this generation, time and age, we still have people throwing litter from moving vehicles that should stop moving forward. The idea is you really have a role to play as far as protection of uh, the environment is concerned. All right. Yes. Thank you very much for making time this evening. This is a conversation we'll keep having because behavior change takes a while. And by the way, waste management is solely part of your responsibility. Whenever you're in the house, what do you do with your waste? That's the first question you should always ask yourself. Dr. Ayub Basharia, Director of Environmental Enforcement, NEMA, thank you very much for making time. James Odongo, CEO Kipro, thank you very much for making time. Dr. Taiba Hatimi, CEO Baustaka Enterprise, thank you very much for making time. And Omitio Diambo Programs Manager, Kenya Alliance of Residents Association, CARA, and thank you all for for watching this conversation we keep having this conversation more frequently so that we create awareness as much as we can all right on behalf of everybody who made this possible we say good night and god bless